Hi everyone, my name is Chris with miniloaders.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to change the filters on an Intrepid KM100 Tele. The Intrepid KM100 Tele has a Kubota 1105 diesel engine and these are the filters we're going to look at today. So we have our hydraulic oil filter, we have an inner air filter, we have an outer air filter, we have an inline fuel filter, we have an engine oil filter and we have a fuel filter. When it comes to tools that you need to change out the filters, it's good to have a set of rags with you, a filter key, metric 10 and 13 wrenches, and something to place the nuts and bolts in. To start with, it's always good to remove all the panels on the machine, so we can also check the machine for leaks and other damages. So we start with the side panels, I use a metric 10 to remove the side panels, it's two, two bolts. I use something else which makes it faster. You can use a, a wrench as well, it's up to you. We use metric 13 to remove the rear grill. For complete access to the engine, we push the seat forward and we secure the seat to the steering wheel using the seat belt. So we start with the air filter, which is located right here under the seat to remove the inner and the outer air filter from its housing. Just remove the cover, pull up the tab and just pull it out. And then replace it with the new air filter. The fuel filter is located right here. So for changing out the fuel filter, we use a metric 14, a metric 10, and our filter wrench. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap my filter wrench around it to loosen it up, push outwards like that, and I can hand turn it. So when we remove the fuel filter, you'll see that there's fuel inside the fuel filter. So you wanna leave your fuel filter up so the fuel doesn't spill out. As with the other filters, we make sure the seal is greased so it comes off easy. Then we take the new fuel filter, simply spin it back on. Hand tight is enough. So after we've put the new fuel filter back on, we need to make sure the air is out of the system. To do that, we loosen up this nut right here. Then we turn the ignition key, and you hear the fuel pump starts ticking. That means that the diesel fuel starts running through the system, and we can see that fuel will start coming out of that bolt. That means the diesel fuel filter is full of fuel. So now we can tighten that bolt back up again. Next up, we have a 10 millimeter bolt on the engine block itself, which we also have to loosen up. We turn the ignition switch again. We hear the fuel pump running, and then we wait till fuel comes out of that bolt. Now that we've seen fuel come out of that 10 millimeter bolt on the engine block, we know that there's no more air in the system and we can tighten it back up. But when you tighten it back up, make sure you don't tighten it too tight because that bolt is a hollow bolt. So we have our oil filter right here. Using the filter key, it's pretty easy to loosen that up. As you can see, I put up a light here as well so we can see better. Once we've loosened it, we can hand turn it. We take our new filter, make sure the seals are greased, and just spin it back on. Usually when you replace the engine oil filter, you replace the engine oil as well. But for the purpose of this video, we're going to leave that out. We can find the hydraulic oil filter on the left-hand side of the machine. The hydraulic oil filter needs to be changed after the first 600 hours of use. However, when that first 600 hours of use has been passed, we do not need to change the hydraulic oil yet. Because we're not gonna do a hydraulic oil change in this video, we want our oil level to be as low as possible. Otherwise, if we take this off, all excess oil is gonna spill out. That's why, for the purpose of this video, we pump some oil out of the tank to lower the oil level even more to be precise, below this red line right here, I'm gonna raise the boom up, that way more hydraulic oil is in the hydraulic lines. As with the other filters, we take some grease and we grease the seal a little bit, that way it's easier to remove when we replace it again. Then we take some rags and place them under the hydraulic filter to pick up any spillage when we remove the filter itself. To remove the hydraulic filter, we take a filter key, wrap it around like this, and spin towards the front of the machine. Some hydraulic oil will start spilling out. As you can see, it's always useful to have some buckets on hand to pick up excess hydraulic oil that spills out out of the machine. Once the hydraulic filter has come loose, I use a rag to pick it up and take it off. 
The next step is to simply spin the new hydraulic oil filter back on. We use our filter wrench to tighten it back up. That was it. It normally takes two to three hours to replace all filters, including hydraulic and engine oil. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments or contact me at miniloaders.com. That's where you can find my phone number and my email.